Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Richard Livingston. I want to thank you for joining me again today here on Livingston's Ledger. My special guest today is Rob Surrett, an internationally renowned artist, an inspirational speaker, and one of Disney's top tier master fine artists. He also holds three Guinness Book of Records. Uh, Rob, as a middle school teacher myself, uh, when I came to see your performance at the school, I know that you've done over 4,000 schools in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, it was interesting, you had 400 students that were just spellbound uh, for the whole hour, and that's unheard of in a middle school. But I would like to start off by, uh, we all know the kids today, everyone knows what Uber is. Uh, but in the days of old, in our youth, uh, they were taxi cabs. And would you be willing to share with us the story that you told uh, about your grandmother uh, going to coming home from the grocery store in the taxi cab? Yeah, you know, it was like an important moment of my life because it was a bad day. But yeah. I think I had a full circle moment where it turned out to be like a blessing. So if I can just say that my grandmother, when I was 13, went to the supermarket by taxi and her pocketbook got stolen and when she came back five minutes later in a different taxi I was the first one to see her out the front window and she was crying and I had no idea why so I yelled at my parents that something was wrong we ran out to see and again this is the story I tell middle school kids and it's a yes. real story and for whatever reason you hear a pin drop because maybe they're thinking in their minds of something that a hardship or adversity that they faced right. so they want to see how did I handle this because I'm 13 in the story, and they're 13 in the audience. So my grandmother says, the pocketbook is gone. She said, we should forgive the person. She said, they must have needed the money, even though she probably only had like $15 probably for them to steal. She said, wait a minute, all my favorite photos of your grandfather are gone. I'll never see them again, because we didn't have discs or backups of digital. There was no digital photos back then. She said, the photos are gone. I'll never see my favorite photos of your grandfather again. So I say to the kids, what do you do in a situation like that? I felt all the negative emotions, anger, frustration, stress, anxiety. What do you do? Life can flatten you. We were all paralyzed. No one knew what to say. So I was inspired. I really was. I say to the kids, that's when your heart speaks to you a message. And I said, I'm going to go to my room, 13 years old, get a big pad of paper, I'm going to draw the most realistic portrait I can of my grandfather from a photo from my parents' album to make up for the fact that she lost her favorite photos. I said, so here I could have like wanted to get revenge on the person, hunt them down. You know, that's the negative way of dealing right, with your negative right. emotions. I was inspired to do something great. So it's like I turned the tables on life. I took 15 hours and I show the kids on the video screen the actual drawing. And they all go like, wow. I said, I never knew I could draw so well. 15 hours, it had to look realistic, otherwise the stunt wouldn't have really worked as a gift. So I gave it to my grandmother, she unwrapped it, and like, I think she cried for like a week. And she tried touching it, I remember, and she said it looked like it was alive. She said, you made one of the worst days, one of the best days. And I know I did, and I tell my audience, I said, you can do something similar. You turn the world upside down with doing something so thoughtful like that. Mm. So I said, you know, I think my career was born that day. I never knew I could draw so well because all my portraits before then, I'd get teachers or my family to be like, you know, it doesn't really look like Michael Jordan. It doesn't really look like, I remember oil, oil can Boyd from the Red Sox. It doesn't really look like Ray Bork from the Bruins. Here, it looked just like my grandfather. I captured it. Why is it because my power came from here? Right. So it's the most powerful point of your body, it's your heart center. So, so here I had this full circle moment. Was that meant to be? I say yes. It was a profound moment of my life, which it was one of the worst days, but it turned out to be one of the best days. And I think a lot of it has to do with she, like my grandmother was my best friend and I know that she was your best friend. Which brings me to, uh, in a recent interview, you had said uh, you open yourself up to be inspired and then boom. You empty your mind and open the door with intent to be inspired. You know how to uh, get instantly. Uh, you get blasted. And it sounds like this is a key to your creativity and productivity. Can you ex share with my audience mm -hmm. how it is you put yourself in that position? Okay, I'm gonna try, because people will ask this a lot. How do you get inspired? So many artists will say, like, I just don't feel it today. 
you know, and then they're stuck. <laughs> I can't come up with a creative idea, and then they're stuck. So if I can explain to people, I think you might understand is, I turn the thinking part of my brain off, which is the left side of the brain. I turn the right side of the brain off, which is the imaginative part. And then there's this like movie screen in my mind, and I just let it go blank. And I ask for inspiration. And then all of a sudden I say, I want to come up with an idea to solve this problem, or what will my next painting be, or what do I do in a situation like this? So it's like a meditative state. You turn off the left side of your brain, which is thinking. You turn off the right side of your brain, which is the imagination. And you just sit there and you ask, you set the intention, I want to be inspired. And it might not happen right away. I mean, maybe it happens when you're mowing the lawn, maybe a couple hours later, but then boom, I open myself up to inspiration. What is that? I don't know. Uh, it's probably from the spirit world. I think that's what inspiration yeah. means. Yeah. And that's how I've gotten my most amazing ideas is to open myself up to inspiration. So what is it exactly? I don't know, yeah. but it's powerful. Um, which leads into my next question. Uh, could you elaborate on that regarding the inspiration as from the spirit intense blasting uh, within, within the ideas that you get. Uh, not from you, but from the spirit world. Uh, you've it learned so. to harness this ability for inspiration. Yeah, it seems so, because like magic sort of follows me everywhere I go. Like I will say to myself, I want to be a Disney artist. How can I become a Disney artist? I would write letters to the Disney company and they'd write back with this very polite letter, we can't open any solicitations. It's always been our company policy. We know you're disappointed. I'm like, oh man. So then I learned to draw all artwork on the outside of the envelope. Yep. And I would highlight my website and I would send it to them. I know they're not going to open it, but they can see my artwork on the envelope. Yeah. And they'd send the polite letter. We can't accept any yeah. solicitations. So I sat there and it's almost like you could call it a prayer. You could call it your intention. You can call it like you're trying to manifest. It doesn't matter what you call it. You're just sort of tapping into the unseen world where I think a lot the of things in life yeah are working, but we can't see. Right. It's the invisible world, you want to call it the spiritual world. I don't think it matters what you call it, but I think a lot of energies and forces, or what about your ancestors in heaven? Yeah. Don't you think they're trying to help? I think they're trying to help as much I as they can. I agree with you. They're yeah, not yeah. taking your steering wheel, but I think they're trying to assist. Uh, there's I, mean, no I, I can feel it, I can feel it, can't you? I do, and I and I agree with you. And I believe, uh, believe um, the message you sent to the children in the audience of your school programs is etched in their hearts and their souls. Uh, you said to them, you matter in the world. Uh, you're alive for a reason. Glow from the inside out. The world will reflect that back to you. Chase your dreams. Make life go the way you want to go and take the steering wheel and drive it with love, passion, kindness, and self-love. Could you relate how these messages have come about? First of all, that's one of the climax moments of my show because I spend a lot of time building up to those messages that are powerful. And of course, the accompanying music reaches a climax. So I start off, just so the audience knows, I start off with six foot speed paintings and I'm covered with paint. And there's the big video screens, the lights in the auditorium are off. And, you know, I'm throwing paint and they're like, what is this guy doing? And then out of like two, three, four minutes, they're like, oh my gosh, it's like, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a portrait of, I, Albert Einstein or Martin Luther King or Abraham Lincoln. So then when people are like, wow, this guy's like, this is entertainment. Wow, and they're coming up from math class and English class. So there they are and like, I'm automatically the hero because they're just like, what is this? We were in math class five minutes ago and now we see this guy <laughs> throwing paint, he's painting his hair, painting his mouth, paint, what, what is this? So it's entertaining, it's fun, it's uplifting. So then I reach about three quarters of the way through the show, the climax moment where it's, you're on earth for a reason, you matter, you're smarter than you think, you're more capable than you think, you're more magnificent than you think because humans are powerful, humans are resilient, humans are magnificent. And the kids just sit there and they're like, and they glow, right? They certainly do. So there's so much magic. What I want to say though, I don't think that registers with their thinking brain, what mm -hmm. I just said, as much as I feel like it resonates with their hearts. Do you agree? Yes, there's no question about it. Because you all of a sudden see kids and all of a sudden they're in tears. And, you see, and I have the accompanying video where I show a lot of real everyday examples of kids from my audiences who have then done amazing things. 
which almost defies logic, which is the left side of the brain. You see kids and they stop like hugging each other as they're listening, whether it's the little kindergarten kids who hug while I'm saying those messages, or it's 16, 17, 18 year old kids. Yeah. Especially girls, they'll just sit there and they just sort of like put their heads together. Yeah. It's not registering, I don't think, with the left thinking side of their brain as much as I think it's registering deep in their hearts and souls. So that's the magic. What is that though? I don't know. That's the invisible world again, right? Yeah. That's the intangible. You can't yeah. put your thumb on, what is it that just made me cry? I don't think it's logic, I think it's filling their hearts and souls. I think that's the magic of my show, because it's not about me, it's not about showing off, look what I can do, it's trying to fill their hearts and souls. And that's even hard to write on a brochure, I fill their hearts and souls, to be like, oh, who's this crazy guy? So I don't say that, I say I speed paint faster than anyone in the whole world. Ooh, let's hire this guy, it's an art show. And it is an art show, but then three quarters of the way through the show, right. I, I surprise them with that overwhelming feeling again, where I'm, f I'm consciously filling up their hearts and souls. I call it magic, because it's so intangible, it's invisible, right. but I, may, I bring them to tears. Sometimes there's not a dry eye in the whole place. Yes, I saw that with quite a few of the students. The other thing uh, I found that was interesting, your choreography of the music, the artwork, your inspirational speeches, uh, just like like you say, it was building up and building up, and I could see that in the kids. The kids were just awestruck, and they're trying, whispering to one another, what is it you're doing? And when you were able to take a painting and come out with it, they were shocked. Yeah. And I think, I, I believe the impact of your audience is so deep, intense, and everlasting, because you are so in love with your work as you immerse the students uh, in what it is to be alive. In your own words, you said, art is a way of catching attention and reaching their hearts through the creative right side of the brain. The thinking part of the brain will go into a sleep state when you're watching a movie. No one sits there and says, oh, Jaws, oh, that's completely fake. It's just, it's, it's, it's a movie making technique. It's a trick. It's, people don't think that. The left side of the thinking brain goes into almost like a sleep state. And then all of a sudden you're like, wow, you believe in the movie. You know it's fake movie, right? Yeah. Like the Titanic movie. I mean, it's based on a real story, but it's the thinking part of the brain that takes over. It's the imaginative dream state, which is like totally connected to your heart and soul. It's why you miss an exit on the highway because you're daydreaming. So people are like, oh, imagination, that's just for kids. No, imagination, that dreaming connection with the right, the heart and soul, it's, it's it's, it's the magic of life. There's no question about it. After your school performances I attended, the students were ecstatic to engage you in conversation and you gave sage advice uh, not to be ashamed of being different, uh, be yourself regardless. There is so much more to life than you think. Uh, never, ever, ever give up on yourself. What specific responses have you uh, had regarding your advice to these young adolescents? Well they need to hear those things and they may not hear them ever. Yeah. Kids come up to me and I remember that particular audience, there were a few kids that came up and one girl, if you remember, she says, I feel so different. She says, I don't feel like I blend in with everyone. I don't fit into the regular mold. I don't follow the crowd. She says, right. I'm not afraid to be myself. And she says, I get kind of bullied for that. I remember that, yes. So all different types of people come up to me after the show and they'll say that maybe I inspire them. But in particular, that day, and then her friends came yeah. and sort of said, we feel the same way. And what I said to them is something, again, I hope they hear at home. I hope they hear at school. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. I'm going to blast them with, you be you. You were made you. So find out who you are. Find your groove in life. Find your flow. And crank that up. Amplify right. that. That's your truest you is you being you, not you trying to be someone else, not you trying to fit in someone else's mold. You can't pound that square peg into a round hole, right? And then exactly. all of a sudden they glowed. I was giving them permission to be them. And I, one of the young girls had said to you, I'm different, I know I'm different and everyone treats me, but I'm trying to change. And when you came back to her and said, you be you, there's a reason why you're different yes. and stay there. And 
you could see, I mean, this teenage girl, you know, and it's a difficult time because middle school, they're, you know, going to be going, moving on, their age is changing, the hormones are changing and everything. So uh, I could see your impact immediately, and it was wonderful. Thank you so much. So after the show, sometimes it's more powerful than during the show. Exactly. Because then they're like, they get to really talk with me because if there's time before they go back to class, depends on the teacher, depends on the schedule. I love talking to the kids because first of all, they see legitimately that I love people. Yeah. And then secondly, um, they can get maybe a little more of a personal message from me that they need to hear. Oh, and these young kids definitely did yeah, that Yeah, and the teachers let them yeah. stay, if you remember. They I, chatted with yep. me for 20 minutes or, th yes. or so. No, it was wonderful. It was just yeah. wonderful to see the inspiration that you said. Um, you used the word throughout the whole conversation here in the interview of magic and magical uh, with such reverence. Uh, it is like a kind of signature that there is magic in life, especially when you described your grandfather's drawings. Um, as early as three years old, you would uh, sit there fixated while he was doing his work, and you felt it was magical. And you had no art classes, uh, and you said, so, which brings me to a question I asked you that day about the wiring in your brain. And I had said to you, do you have a three-dimensional mind? Because it just seems incredible that you can paint a picture completely a portrait upside down and then turn it around and show it to everybody. And you also had said to me that driving down the highway, if you got on the highway at one point and you and I asked you to tell me from this point to the next point how many guardrails there were or how many white lines there were and you said your mind was counting them the whole time you were driving. Yeah, yeah. I, I, just, just, <laughs> I don't count them one, oh, two, no, three, four, happens. five, but I notice them. I notice every single white line that my car drives past. I notice every guardrail. I, know, I just see them. I notice them. So my brain is just super active in the sense that maybe my brain's not symmetrical. This would be a symmetrical <laughs> brain. Mine is more like, like that. And kids resonate with that also. I went uh, to a, um, the Carroll School in Lincoln. Uh, might be for different, um, might be for maybe dyslexic students. And they're like, are you dyslexic? I'm like, maybe. Like, are you on the spectrum? I'm like, I, maybe. <laughs> I, it's like, my brain is definitely not <coughs> symmetrical. But getting back to those kids who are bullied, I've learned to harness my strengths. Because I do yeah. have strengths, what and maybe I have weaknesses work. in the brain. So you learn to go with your strength. I'm that way for a reason. You're that way for a reason. Some of the most brilliant people, Steven Spielberg is one of my favorite examples, where he will say that, I believe that he believes he has Asperger's syndrome. syndrome. Oh, wow. Okay. But he has this precision with his movies, right, that blow people away. So he's learned to harness it and no longer feel like it's a disability, but it's a, it's a gift. Right. It's a talent. It's a superpower. So what if I tell kids the same exact thing? Because, I mean, here's this guy, me, I've paint all over me like this. Some people are like, this guy's crazy. <laughs> and next thing you know, something amazing comes out of the mess. I'm like, that's the way life is, is you just need to muddle your way through. And if you can yeah, harness yeah. your strengths, people all of a sudden are like, wow, that uniqueness that I got bullied for, I've learned to turn into my superpower. Exactly. I have a superpower. Imagine that. I love it. Would you speak to my audience about your art response to 9-11, where people from different countries look and you have a, a beautiful portrait, I think it's a 10 by 20, and you have people from America, all different types, and then on the opposite side you have children and adults from foreign countries looking at one another. And if I'm not mistaken, you offered it to the United Nations? Yes. So basically that's my first Guinness World Record. So one for full circle moment is, I always wanted to set a Guinness World Record since I was 10 years old. So then here now when I was say 25 or however I was, late 20s, I did set my first Guinness World Record. Cha-ching! Wow. Full circle moment, right? Another full circle moment is as I was hearing after 9-11, there was so much hatred towards other ethnicities. So I could sit there on a YouTube video on a microphone and be like, Stop making fun of other people. We're all equal. No, my gift is I'm a visual artist. So I said, let me set a Guinness World Record, 504,000 light bright pegs, because yeah. another full circle moment is I never owned light bright as a kid, and I always wanted one, and I never got one, and all my <laughs> friends had a light bright. I'm like, I want one. So I, another full circle moment is I never owned a light bright, and next thing I know, I have 800,000 pegs in my garage that I got for free. 
which now I can play with. And I've created, you're right, all the faces on the left are Americans, all the faces on the right are all people from all over the world. Yeah. And notice how they're all looking at each other in friendship. Yeah. So here, my place in the world I have found is to give people fun, visual, stimulating, artistic pictures that maybe will send a message, maybe will reach deep in their hearts, maybe will fill up their souls more than if I use my words. And I, I, that brings me to uh, another masterpiece. Uh, it was a gift masterpiece, uh, specifically the one that you gave to the Queen of Jordan, uh, bridging the gap between the East and the West uh, with doves and a rainbow over the top of the palace. And do you feel that these personal gifts are so amazing as they are a visual sign of the invisible possibility of peace? And how did you come about the idea? Okay, 100% yes to all the above. Why can't an artistic outreach, to uh, try to do that to as many countries and heads of state as I can, why can't that perhaps add to world peace? One of these days I'm going to hit it so big where I'm <laughs> going to have some sort of image. Maybe it'll create... Another a, Guinness Book record. <laughs> yeah. Well, the stars maybe will align where I maybe can create something which will really cause this tidal flow yeah. of peace throughout the world because of an artistic creation of mine. So yes, all of the above, I will reach out to all kinds of presidents and prime ministers and kings and queens and princesses. And I visit a lot of homeless shelters and hospi children's hospitals too. It's with my artwork trying to uplift people, try to convey a message. So yeah, you're right, that, that was their palace in Jordan. And I like the king and queen of Jordan because since 9-11 they've been very they've tried really hard to bridge the gap between the East and the West. Their own kids have attended universities here in America. They Wonderful. love America, Wonderful. but they're also trying to teach America, like, we're not so different from you. Right. So therefore, let's look at our similarities. And I love that, trying to bridge the gap. I love that. I think it was wonderful. And you've also stated that um, after the show, there's a story to be told. Uh, and I know we've talked about some of the school uh, children after your shows. Is there any particular one that jumps out at you that you'd like to I'll tell a quick that? one and then my favorite one. The quick one is just about a month ago this mom says I don't know what you said at your show but my first grader came home and emptied their piggy bank and said we need to donate this money and we found a local homeless shelter. I love it. And the mother says I don't really know what happened. My <laughs> child came home even with the word inspiration that the Never heard our first grade son or daughter ever use that word inspiration before. I'm inspired to do this. And she says, I just want to thank you. I'm like, unbelievable. <laughs> I was going to even send a gift to that kid. And I said, no, I'm not going to send a gift because they, they, they weren't looking for anything in return. Right. Let's let them just do that good deed and be so happy. So I wrote a congratulatory letter. I mean, I didn't send the gift. I could have sent a gift. But I said, let them be the hero because they weren't expecting anything in return. But my favorite one is Kelly from Rumford, Maine, which is pretty far up, and they had an, a sold-out youth ministry event hiring me, where I think they sold out 800 seats in the high school auditorium. Wow. And she was about, say, a young teenager. And after that, her mom used to tell me many times through the years, she was totally inspired by your speed painting show. And she's like, Ma, I'm going to travel the world one day and help out at orphanages. And that's exactly what she does now that she's a nurse. Wow, in beautiful. In her mid-late 20s. And her favorite place on earth is Ghana, Africa. So a full circle moment is, a few years ago, there was a high school student at Boston Latin High School in Boston. Yeah. And as they were graduating, they felt like their class really had some issues that needed to be addressed. I don't know if it was hatred, I don't know if it was racial inequality, I don't know what it was. So this one student at Boston Latin drew a portrait of each of their classmates. Wow. Went in on the weekend, pasted them all up and down the halls, and when they all came in on Monday at Boston Latin High School, no one could believe all of these charcoal portraits brought the class together. It made them look like they were almost like a family. And it moved the kids that that one student spent so many hours drawing each individual classmate. Big size. Wow. And then it just was an artistic triumph. And it brought the class together, they said. And started solving mm. some of those problems. Started bridging the gap. 
with That's artwork. So, so getting back to Kelly from Rumford, Maine, when she discovered this orphanage, I said, I'm going to have the full circle moment where I always wanted to replicate what that student of Boston Latin did. So I said to Kelly, get me a photo of each one of those orphans at that orphanage in Ghana. Wonderful. Which was not easy to do because a lot of them don't have cameras right, there. Right. There's, there's, there's so much poverty. So some volunteers, they got as many pictures as they could. We got all 65 kids. It took me about two, three years to get those photos. And then I drew a four hour portrait for, for, as a free gift of each one of those kids. And the reactions from Ghana, Africa was so heartwarming as those orphans came into the dining hall or the living room at the common room and they saw all their portraits. Now, what is this one? Third dog. Oh, yeah, that's, that's Third dog. Third dog. These kids uh, have all the odds against them, and if you look at the reactions of those videos from Ghana, I'm filling up their hearts and souls. Look how proud they are to see themselves. So I said, here I am, and just an artist, and it's just my contribution, which feels so good, because I searched for many years to figure out how do I fit into the world. And I really pushed myself, and I studied myself, and I tried my hardest, and here now I have found, which I hopefully try to inspire other people, is find your little niche in the world. Now, uh, we only have a few minutes left. Is there something in particular that you would uh, want to impart to my audience here? Uh, so many people will say I'm not creative. I'm not an artist. I don't have a green thumb. I can't cook. I can't draw a straight line, I can't draw a stick figure, right? And the examples go on and on and on. Creativity to me, in your imagination, it's one of the richest parts of like my life or anyone's life. But you don't have to be born talented, you don't have to be born an artist, you don't have to be classically trained. I was not classically trained. Here's my thing I'd like to impart to your audience is try something different. Go for a walk someplace you've never gone before, go on a vacation that you've never been to before. Read a book that you've never read that type of book before. Do something totally different. Buy yourself brand new clothes. Maybe people can resonate with that. Whole new outfit. How does it make you feel? What about a whole new haircut? What about this friend of mine when she, she was in her 90s, 80s, who started taking ballroom dancing classes? Because when she was an elementary school student, her teacher said, you'll never be a dancer. Why? You're too tall. So for the rest of her life, she thought, I would love to be a dancer, but I was told I could never be a dancer. I'm too tall. So in her 80s, she started ballroom dancing classes two, three times a week and then entered competitions. And it just brought so much joy in her life where she said, I dared to do something. So my advice to anyone is to be creative. I'm not creative. Yes, you are. Do something different take a risk and do something you always wanted to do. People will say, I always wanted to write a book. Write that book. I always wanted to go to the African safari and see animals like right coming up close to you in the Jeep. Save you money and do that. I always wanted to go help out at a homeless shelter. Do that. How many people will say I have things on my bucket list, right? Yes. Do everything you can to do those things. And people might say, but you don't understand. I can't, I don't have the resources, I don't have the health. Okay, fine. Well, let's do some simpler things then that are different, that are new, that are refreshing. I'm sure there's some simple things you can do in your realm of possibilities that are something different. You're being creative. Rearranging the furniture even, repainting the walls. People all of a sudden, they feel uplifted, right? They're being creative. They're inventing something new. They're creating something out of nothing. And to me, that's such magic in life. Thank you so much. I, I deeply appreciate your time and uh, I'd like to take this opportunity. I'd like to thank Rob Soret for being a special guest here today and the uh, production crew from Westford Cat. They've been fantastic to me and very patient with me uh, in this production, but also to you, my audience, that continue to look and, and uh, share and like uh, the episodes that I've put out there. Uh, it's because of you that the program has been successful, and I would appreciate it. Continue to share it, continue to like it, and uh, thank you very much.